Welcome back everybody, I'm Brad. I'm Steve. And we're still live, so that's good. So this is the brew day for the Chinook IPA. If you didn't see the overview of that, go back and watch it. That'll show you the grain bill and everything. Um, the only difference with the grain bill is at 60 minutes in the boil, they called for 0.75 ounces of Chinook and I put in an ounce. I was round up. Yeah. So um this one was uh brewed on April third and this was my first fly, fly sparge. Okay, so new system completely. Yep. Totally new. Um <clears throat> no more pulling the yeah, green no bag more, up. Yeah. Yep. Um I can say it did take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Um I can't remember exactly when I ended, but I did start at 10.45 in the morning, and I started my boil at 1. So let me ask you this. Did you see better efficiencies? Was there a, a pro-con to doing it this way versus the other way? Um, what I did, the first thing I did was I put all my equipment into Beersmith. So that way it had everything, and I went exactly by what it had. Um, I didn't go out to you know some other site and say, here's the equation for this, here's the equation for that. I let Beersmith do it all, and I want to say I probably ended up with four and a half gallons in the keg. So a little and, less than yep, what you wanted. But um, your efficiency, if, though. if I come back and look at this, though, and here's the weird thing. My batch size was for 5.25. Okay. Okay? In the end. My final bottling volume is 4.75. Okay. So I'm guessing, and I guess I never looked at the bottling volume size before, and I'm guessing because it's dry, dry um, hopped with you lost Chinook, some. you're going to lose some, and that's what it's that's for. That's probably what yep. it was. So I do have some tweaking to do because I would like five gallons at the end. Yeah. But um, overall, um, I would say the only trouble I had was controlling the flow of my hot liquor tank into my mash uh, tun. Bed. Right, because... Um, I kind of went out in the area here, but I put the hot liquor tank on top of a fridge. Then I had my mash tun sitting on a table. Then I had my brew pot sitting on the floor. And with the long cord of the hot liquor tank, I couldn't keep the sprayer vertical. It always wanted to turn tilt, because it's so then it came right. Out and it so didn't spray. It, yep. So what I did was I kind of held it once I got the all yeah, valves yeah. open and did that. So to me, it worked out. Uh, my efficiency in the end was seventy two point four five percent. So I mean, I can see those with the uh, brew in a bag. Yeah. Though. So it'll be interesting over time once you get your equipment dialed in to see what the pros and cons Correct. are to having that type of yep. equipment. Versus the brew in the bag. Right. Um, you know, with, with what I do. Yep. And so, like I said, for all my water volumes, I went through and I used pretty much exactly like they did, except for the very end. It told me to fly sparge with 2.4 gallons. I did a little over 3 gallons. Just to make sure that I had it. And... Um, they say you should do your runnings until it hits like 10.08. Yeah. And once I got up to the six and a half gallon mark, which is what it said I needed to boil, uh, 6.46. So once I got up to six and a half, I stopped it. So um, I could have probably went a little bit more, but for uh, my numbers, um, my pre or my estimated pre boil gravity was ten forty five and I hit eleven bricks, which is ten four five. So you hit dead yep. knots. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering too if because uh, it's a different pot as well, right? That you're using. Or do yes. you use the same pot? Yeah. Yep. So Good I wonder pot. if um, your boil off rate might need to be changed as well. And yeah, and I did change that. I think I went on the forums and for the mega pot, a lot of people were 
using over a gallon and a half for boil off. In an hour? Yeah. So, Seems um, I, don't, I don't think, yeah, it's not on here. But, so I... So as you dial it in, right. it'll get better. Yep. But, um, so my pre-boil was 1045, I hit that. Um, for my, um, my... Your dog? Yeah. <laughs> New dogs, I tell you what. <laughs> um, so my final gravity was supposed to be 1012, and I'm not sure what six and a half bricks is times four or five. You're just looking for an OG of six and a half, or after it's fermented? After it's fermented. Is it, do you times it by five? I don't know. You keep talking, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. So, um, I hit, uh, the final gravity was six and three quarter bricks, um, which puts me at a final gravity of 6.4%. And I think this is saying somewhere. Did you say it was six? What was your OG, original bricks? My original bricks, I believe, was 14. Okay, and you're fine? No. My, my, yeah, post boil was uh, 14, and my final dry hopped at like um, six point or six and three quarter. So I'm usually write that down. So it looks like your original gravity was 1.055 and your final was 1.012. That was a rough estimate. One, two. So my estimate is dead nuts. Okay. From what it is. This, this little, and, and for those that are wondering, I'm using Brew Buddy here. They've got a little quick refractometer um, calculation on here. However, if you plug it into Beersmith, it will give you a much more accurate. Yeah. There's times where this is slightly off. I thought this gave a final percent, but I don't see it. it oh, final is... Uh, no, J on uh, Beersmith. Oh, it's 5.6. <clears> yeah. Is, is what okay, so we ended up at 6. I would say cleaning went a hell of a lot easier. Really? Because um, I didn't have to screw around with the bag, you know, and yeah, dump it all out. Yeah, to... or wait until the bag cooled down before I could dump it out because you have to grab it and do all that. Um, this, I just took the whole thing, dumped it in the trash, sprayed it out, then it's pretty much yeah. done. Yeah. So, um, But like I said, I'm guessing it took a little bit more, maybe an hour, if that more. Um, and getting your times where you have to heat the water up, you know, because... It's going to take some learning. <laughs> yeah, because you have to heat up your initial water, say four gallons, put that into your mash tun, then dump the grains in, let that sit for an hour, but before that hour's up, you have to get the three gallons or three point up whatever... Up to temp. Up to temp, put that in the hot liquor tank. Wait. Wait, then once it's ready, so... Um, Heating. You got to make sure that gap isn't too big, or else that liquor tank will start to lose heat. Yeah, but um, and that was what I I actually went over. I thought it would take about ten minutes to heat up like three gallons of water. Yeah, and it was about twenty minutes. It was cold out, so it was going to take longer. So um, actually, my mash um, rest instead of an hour was like an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, that's fine. So, it's not going to yeah. do anything. Yep. It's better so, actually. So I, I need to play around with that to see when I have to get it and go from there. But overall I like it. I'm not saying I like it better than brewing a bag yet, but on the flip side. So like, you know, if you look at my process and there will be a video shortly, um, you know, I've got to set up a ladder, right? A pulley, uh, then I've got shipping blankets and a wrap that I get on my pot and put on there. And, you know, I mean, you don't have to do anything. Right. It's a cooler. So you right. just shut the top and go. Yep. My only thing, though, is I have to get that hot liquor tank up above the mash tun 
so that way it can drain down so I have to have something tall and maybe I have to use a ladder and you know put a board across it and hopefully it'll stay up there <laughs> <laughs> you know so um, I was lucky I had the fridge so I moved the table right by the fridge and I set it up there and I had a streamline sure. that you'll see in this video I should have mentioned that at the beginning um, I will show some of it but um, yeah so that was that was what I did this time. Will I be able to do it every time? Who knows? And maybe a pump is something in your future. Right. Who knows? Yep. But, yeah, I, I would say the hardest part of the whole thing was getting my output water of the mash to the mash. same as my fly sparge going in is okay. the hard part. So, yeah, I... Well, I can't wait to watch this video because I want to see all the troubles that you had yeah. versus me. It was easy. Putting the grain in and pulling the bag <laughs> out. So. But make sure you stay tuned because we are going to do the review of the Chinook um, beer. It is ready. It's been in the keg since uh, 4.17, so almost oh, a month. Yeah, it's so, ready to go. Yeah, it, it's ready to go. Uh, you'll see that soon, so make sure you stick around. Um also, make sure you check out handyhomebrew.com. Um, it's a newer site that's up. Uh, we're doing articles and all that. Make sure you check that out. And don't forget to like and comment on this video. Uh, what do you guys do in fly sparge? Do you guys have somebody or do you do fly sparge and brew in the bag? Um, and if you've and, done them both, what yeah. are the pros and cons that you see? Right. Because I still haven't converted to the dark side yet. Right. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> but until next time, I'm Brad. I'm Steve. Happy brewing. See you next time.